Have you always wanted to write a book, but the only reason you haven't is because you're just a teenager? Well, have no fear, because this is part two of my video series on advice for teenage authors. Let's get started. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Boxing Day, whatever you're celebrating this time of year, Happy Holidays, and I hope COVID hasn't completely sucked the joy out of it all. Last week, I gave you five pieces of advice of things that you should not do as a teen author. So this week, I'm going to go into what I believe that you should do. Besides, you know, writing every day. Let's jump right into it. Number one, get a job that doesn't suck your soul out. I have worked a lot of jobs in my lifetime. In fact, I still say my pleasure because I worked at Chick-fil-A about 12 years ago. And if you have worked multiple different kinds of jobs, you know that certain kind of work kind of sucks the creative spirit out of you. Whether it's the work that you're doing or the people that you're doing it with or the people that you're doing it for, some jobs just really take it out of you. It makes it really hard for when you get home to sit down and write. For me, when I was a waiter, and especially when I was working in corporate America, my creative spirit would just be completely drained by the end of the day, and the last thing I felt like doing was writing. Now, I'm a huge believer in writing even when you don't feel like it, but if you can avoid feeling like your energy is completely leached out of you, like writing is the very last thing that you want to do, then avoid it. There are tons of different kinds of jobs out there, and yes, while you should take what you can get, it's really not that hard to find different kinds of work. This is not my official advice on job seeking. This is just my personal opinion that it's not as hard to get a job as the mainstream media would have you think. So let me reiterate, yes, take what you can get, but if at all possible, find a job that doesn't just suck your spirit away. Number two, find people who will give you critical advice. It's great if you have people in your life who support your writing. It's great if you have other writer friends. It's great if you have people who regularly read your book, but if no one is giving you critical advice, you'll find it really hard to grow as a writer. Because your work is so subjective, because you're so close to it, you have a hard time seeing what's wrong with it. And if all you ever hear from people is, oh, it's great, there's nothing wrong with it, change nothing then you're kind of at an impasse. You're not really ever gonna grow. You need people to sit down with you and tell you what's not working about your book. It's great if you can read books and learn from them, but when you'll learn most is when you're actually writing and when you get critical feedback on your writing. Number three is find people who encourage you. Just like you need people who give you critical advice, you need to make sure that you have people around you who support you, who keep you going. It's a really weird balance between the two, but you need both. You can't just have one or the other. If you have only critics around you, you're gonna get burned out and discouraged. And if you only have people who encourage you, you're going to stunt your creative growth. So make sure you have people around you, they don't even have to read your books, but people who will support you and tell you that they believe in you. It really makes all the difference in the world. So make sure you have both. Number four is you wanna make sure that you find other writers to connect with. Not so much for the purpose of having them read your works, because that's not always the best idea, but you need to make sure you have other writers around you to hold you accountable, to share their dreams, their goals, their visions, and people that you can share yours with. I have a group of writers that I go out with every other week and have dinner with, and it's very encouraging and very inspiring to be around them and a lot of fun and I get to contribute a lot to the conversations. We get to talk about what we're doing with our writing, where we're going with our business. We get to learn from each other, lean back, share in the common struggle that is being a writer. So I think it's very important because writing is such a lonely job. It's a very lonely pursuit. You're sitting there by yourself writing. Very few people actively sit down with other people and write while being engaged with the person they're sitting with. That's why you'll find that a lot of writers are introverted. They're used to working by themselves and being by themselves. But it's very important that you step outside of your comfort zone because that's usually where you'll experience true growth. And finally, number five, write while you still have time. It's often said that youth is wasted on the young, but it's my personal opinion that time is wasted on the young. Younger people don't really realize how much time they have on their hands until they're too old and they don't have enough of it to use. 
It may seem like you're busy, it may seem like you don't have time to write, but trust me, it's going to be so much harder when you graduate or get a full-time job or get engaged. You have so much more time than you think. Most teenagers do. So it's really up to you to evaluate what really matters. What's taking up your time that you could go without? You don't want to go out into the world and suddenly find yourself with no time on your hands, but with a burning passion to write. Yes, it can be done, but it's so much easier when you have more time. So take it from someone who left his teen years not too long ago, I remember what it's like to have time. And although I've written plenty, I wish that I had used even more of my time to write. I don't like to play the what if game too much, but I believe I would be in a very different place if I had just written more. So I highly encourage you, write while you still have time. And with that, that is going to do it for part two of my advice for teen authors. If you are a teen author, please leave me a note in the comments and let me know if this helped you at all. Let me know what you're writing. Let me know what your dreams are. Let me know how I can help you. Thank you very much for watching. Happy holidays. My name is David Webb and get some writing done.